we're now going to take a look at input process output diagrams or shortened to IPO diagrams. Now an input process output diagram are usually used to visually display the input processes and expected outputs of a system in a tabular format. An input is data that is to be entered in the system from either a user or obtained from another location of the system. A process is a series of steps or operations that will be applied to the data in order to convert the um, input into the desired output. And then the output is the data that has been turned into information after processing, which is basically the whole purpose of the software. Below is an outline of the layout of an input process output diagram. So we first put our inputs into the system. We're entering data into the system. So an input is data that is entered into the system, either from a user or obtained from another location of the system. It is then processed, okay, which is a series of steps or operations that will be applied to the input data in order to convert it into the desired output. And then finally is output, data that has been turned into information after processing, which is basically the whole purpose of the software. So to follow on from that, while this diagram helps us display and understand the inputs, process and outputs of the system, essentially it also helps us understand the relationship between these three elements. The diagram shows the path of how data is entered into the system, input, is then processed through a series of steps, process, which then transforms the data into the desired information, output. When creating an IPO diagram though, it's not uncommon that you may start off by filling in the outputs of the system first, essentially stating what do you want out of this system. By doing so, it allows you to work backwards in order to understand what data needs to be entered as input, as well as what operations need to be applied to those inputs in order to turn it into that desired output. So first we've got to think of ourselves, what data needs to be entered into this system? What operations need to be applied to this data to turn it into the expected output? And what is the expected result of software? So they're the three questions we're asking ourselves when actually entering data into this IPO diagram. So let's take a look now at an example of the basic calculator. So a program is to develop to allow two, uh, a user to enter two different numbers. The software is either to add, subtract, multiply or divide the numbers at the user's discretion. The IPO diagram will outline the layout of these elements. So here is our IPO diagram and it's all blank. So let's start off. Basically, our output is we want the result of this calculation. So we're working this one backwards. Okay. In order to get that now, what do I need to put into the system? Well, I need to put in the two numbers. Okay. And then at the user's discretion to add, subtract, multiply or divide. Now that I know what's going into the system and what's coming out of the system, what do I need in, to do in the middle to turn this input into the output? Well, I need to assign a variable for number one, assign a variable for number two. I need to select a case for the calculation to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. I then need to calculate whatever was selected okay, on number one and number two. And then as a result, the calculation needs to be displayed. And then that will lead to the output of the user getting the result of the calculation. So I hope this gives you a good understanding of how input process output diagrams work. Essentially laying out in a tabular format the inputs, process and outputs of a system. By doing so, allowing you to actually see the relationship of how the input turns into output, okay, and essentially how data turns into information in a very visible format.